on this episode, explosions once more. I always want to see the explosion. But this time, we keep things restrained. Ooh. Oh, how how can we get? How high can we get, baby? All this to show that you've been hit. By a smooth criminal. <laughs> Oh man, it's hot. It's hot. The hottest day of the year yet. And um, I am Christian and this is Lazy Rest Academy and uh, we are working on a cow schmap. Uh, this cow schmap is looking increasingly amazing. Like look at this. This is just, this is just really good stuff, right? Um, but, but. Uh, there's today is gonna be like a little bit of a relaxing episode. We're gonna just do a little bit of a sweeping, a little bit of a clean up stuff. There's, there's two things that I want to do uh, today. Uh, one is gonna be player exploding, and the other thing is we're gonna do some changes to our sprite editor. Um, we're gonna make it so that we can rename sprites in our sprite editor. And in fact, that's maybe something I want to begin with. I want to add. Uh, I'm gonna edit the sprite editor. So I'm gonna go load SPR sprite sprite did oh, sprite beer sprite okay <laughs> okay so um, you can see everything is all the sprites are called SPR SPR and then you have two sprites that are called new I want to maybe uh, add a function to be able to rename those sprites uh, there's um, and you know you have to think about how, about the UI solution how to do this uh, I made a sprite editor previously where you had like a little menu that would pop up if you pressed uh, on, on the right and then you could select different things. I, I, I feel like, I don't know, I feel like we can just edit the name in here. Like why not just like edit the name in here? It's, it makes more sense to me. Um, so I'm thinking maybe if you press enter here and um, that would allow you to edit the name, right? So just like enter here. You could also enter like an entire new row, right? You could enter an enti entire new row that is just telling the name, but we're already writing the name in, in the top here anyway, so why not just being able to edit there, right? Um, let's let's try this. Um, we're gonna try to create a UI here. So here's the, um, uh, the CMD is SPR head. That's the command that is being issued when you are selecting the head. Um, so then I'm gonna go in an update function. Now this is what happens when you when you click on something when you select a thing. So we're gonna go else if um, if the command is spr head, that means that we actually want to add it to the name. So it's gonna be kind of similar, right? It's gonna be kind of similar to this. So we're gonna change to the uh, to update uh, to the typing function. The cell spur is gonna be set to one. The type text, uh, actually, yeah, 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 is gonna be set to S. The cursor is gonna be set to one. And at the end, we're gonna go edit name. That's gonna be the function that's being called at the end. Um, I'm gonna make that, but let's let's first see how that that looks like. So if we go in here, yeah, okay, just we can just yeah, that makes sense. That totally makes sense to me. Okay, good. So now let's create, let's rename, let's create the function that actually changes the name. Mm, that is gonna be UI here, I think, right? Yeah, enter. Enter edit call. Uh, let's uh, let's copy this one. Enter edit name. And in this case, um, my menu. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna get the menu. I don't think we need the menu. But uh, never mind. Uh, we're not gonna change it to a number now. Uh, we're just gonna take set it to this. Um, if type val equals if we set to is set it to nothing, then I feel we not should should not do anything. I think we shouldn't name something nothing. We can name something space, but if it's set to nothing, then I think that's not good. So if we are if we have something that's not nothing, then we set uh, the number one to type val. 
Yeah, uh, there is one problem. There is one problem that we have to deal with. And the problem that we have to deal with is that the names cannot include commas and they cannot include um, pipe characters because we use those two characters to, to encode the string into a, um, a sprite 2D, uh, split 2D function. So we kind of don't want to, to do this if we have uh, commas or pipes in the name. But for now, let us just see if this even works. So um, yeah, let's, let's go in here. Let's edit this. Uh, ship one. Yeah, now it's called ship one. And it also is already here. Let's call this ship two. Let's, let's call it ship two, including without the space. Yeah, that's good. Uh, ship three. Ship four. And then ship five. Isn't that nice? Isn't that nice and neat? And this can be called now um, ship fix one. Ship, ship fix two. All right, it's, it's the fixes that fix the, um, the symmetry of it. And now this can be called short one. Shot. Maybe, maybe we should add the space after all. I think we should maybe add the space after all. I'm gonna export it and I'm gonna see if this works. Yeah, it still looks good. It saved the names, no problem. Let's uh, finish this up. Ah, um, I already see, I kind of don't like how there's a, there's a thing here happening. We don't have a leading zero for the number of the sprite. And so there's kind of like a uneven menu here, but you know what? I'm not gonna obsess about this for now. I'm gonna obsess about it later. Um, I do want to um, fix that name problem though. It's not a big deal, but the thing is like, it's it might create like a um, stupid error and then that error might be difficult to debug later on. So yeah, it's might be it might be a good idea. So let us let us call something like function filter s, and then we're gonna return s, and then um, type file equals filter to stir. So whatever we typed in, we're gonna change it to the string just in case, and then we're gonna run the filter function over it. And the filter function is gonna be something like this. Um, for i equals one to hashtag s do. So we're gonna run through all of the entries in the in the in the string, and then we're gonna do something like a local c equals um, s i. We can do that. That's the new function in in Pico eight. We can grab. Uh, and individual characters from a string by just addressing them as if a string was an array. Uh, and I'm gonna take advantage of that. So we're gonna grab a character from that array, save it into a helper variable C, and we're gonna go if C equals dot, then or C equals a pipe, then uh, and actually not dot, we are, it's, it's comma. Uh, actually, no, let's, let's, let's treat them differently. So uh, this is then else if C equals pipe, yeah. Then C equals, uh, we're gonna change the commas into dots and we're gonna change the pipes into slashes. <laughs> Just like that. Um, it's, it's, it's roughly reminiscent of what we tried to do. Um, yeah, I mean, let's create a local s2 uh, variable and we're gonna set it to an empty string and we're gonna return the, the empty string and then we're gonna go to s2 dot dot equals c. So we're gonna grab each individual character from that input string. We're gonna see if it's comma, then we're gonna turn it into a dot. We're gonna see if it's pipe, we're gonna turn it into a slash and then each character we're gonna write back into a second string and that string is the, the thing that will get returned at the end. So yeah, let's try that. So we're gonna go ship one comma one 
and it will turn into ship uh, one dot one. I'm gonna ship a one a pipe one, the pipe character. How do I do pipe character? Oh, actually, it doesn't it doesn't allow me to do pipe character anyway. <laughs> well, I need, I cannot copy and paste because it's my custom code. Here. Whatever, whatever. Well, okay, we, not, we can't test that, but at least we can test this. Okay, so this works. So let me now go through all of our sprites and give our sprites proper names. Bam! So here are the different names for different things. Um, the names are a bit long. They're kind of like maybe encroaching a little bit on the sprites. I'm not entirely happy about this, but you know, it's fine, it's fine. Uh, by the way, I called the UF UFO, I'm gonna call it UFO A because there's gonna be UFO B and C and so forth um, for testing purposes. Later on, we're gonna probably change a lot of this stuff anyway, but you know, just like to have some meaningful names associated with everything. Let's export this. Let's run this to see that it still retains the information. It does. That's nice. So at the bottom here, we have the collisions. That's cool. Right, so now the next thing is, so we can edit the sprite name metadata. Now, the next thing I wanted to be doing is I want to um, make the player actually explode when they get hit by something. That's something that we're not quite doing right now. And it's kind of annoying because we cannot really test the gameplay. Now I want to do that. All right, let's go to the update function. So this is actually happening here. We have a debug here, but that debug is, come on, come on, get out of here, get out of here, debug. I'm gonna, I can actually delete, I'm gonna be bold. I'm gonna delete the, the, the previous collision detection stuff. That, that's not, not needed anymore. Right, right. Okay, so we're gonna make a function called die. Uh, we're gonna do a separate function called die because there's two opportunities for the player to die. And so we're not gonna repeat that code. So we're gonna put everything in its own function. Um, and yeah. And this is gonna be going to be in gameplay. So we're gonna go function die. Now what happens when the player dies? First of all, I want to see the explosion. <laughs> I always want to see the explosion. Yeah, we're gonna explode the player. Explode um, px py. <laughs> uh, minus um, uh, scroll x. Woo! X scroll. Yeah, baby! Ooh. Oh, how how can we get? How high can we get, baby? Let's go! <laughs> okay, obviously the old collision prob detection problem that is, you know, if the player is currently invincible, then we don't want to uh, do the collision detection. So um, let's um, let's create a, a num. Let's create a variable, maybe. We could save it as a property of our player sprite, but actually, um, I'm not sure if enemy is going to get invulnerable. So let's let's call in let's call let's call invul. Let's create a variable invul, and we're going to do an update function here where we are colliding the ship with enemies and the ship with bullets. We're going to go if invul equals zero, then. Uh, smaller equals zero. Always smaller equals just to make sure that, you know, that, um, you know, to, to avoid any problems. And otherwise, uh, invul minus equals one, right? And so when we die, I want invul uh, to be set to, I don't know, 30. Let's, let's try that. This is good. There is an obvious problem here, and that is, you know, the player is not really exploding. The first, oh, there's a bunch of problems here. First of all, the player is not really exploding. The um, the explosions underneath the player, it should be actually over on top of the player. So that's kind of like a bit of a problem. Uh, we're gonna have to think about how to deal with that. But there's another problem here, and that is 
Um, the invulnerability is not really displayed anyway. We cannot like there's no nothing informs us about uh, invulnerability being there. So let us let us do in, like let us make sure that this is um, this is something that we can actually see. We already had that in in the basic schmap tutorial. So let's let's see where where is the player? Where's the player? Here's the bullets. Oh, yeah, there's the ship. And the ship is really simple now. And that's the ship and that's the flames, right? So we're gonna do if if in vol in vol smaller n equals zero or that's or time modulo one equals smaller than zero point five. I'm going to explain it in a second. And actually, I'm going to do it like this. And then the camera resetting and, re and, and setting is going to be part of drawing the, the, the player, something like this. OK, so just like to, to make sure we're understanding what's happening. So if the invulnerability is set to 0, if there is no invulnerability happening, or it's smaller than 0, whatever, or if it's higher than zero, so we have some invulnerability going on, um, but also, um, so then we want to be blinking, right? If the if the if the invulnerability is zero, then we absolutely want to draw the ship. But if it's uh, greater than zero, so we have some invulnerability happening right now, then we might want to not draw the ship sometimes. Um, so we want to have do some blinking, and the way we achieve the blinking is. We take the time variable, which is like ticking down, right? Uh, we do a modulo one. Um, the time variable is the amount of seconds that have passed since you launched the program. Uh, and it's, it is a comma value because it's counting in seconds. So it's gonna be 1.5 seconds, for example. We do a modulo one. So we just get the, the comma, the point value of, of the second. And uh, we, uh, if, if we could just draw the player ship, if that point value is smaller than 0 0.5. So, you know, uh, we um, blink every half a second right now. That's what that we're basically doing. We're blinking every half a second if the invulnerability is set on. I feel like this, this might not be um, fast enough. So let's, let's multiply it by two. Let's put the invulnerability at really long so we can see this in action. Yeah, this is just way too slow. Let's go like this. All right, this is a lot better. But maybe a bit too fast now. Let's go times six. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe five. See, this is too, too slow, I feel. Uh, let's go eight. Yeah, that feels better. Maybe even nine. Yeah, nine, nine feels correct. This feels like the correct number. And so now I'm not even sure what the proper invulnerability period is. 30 is way too slow uh, because that's like 30 frames. That's half a second. This is okay. But you know, let's, let's, let's set it to two seconds. Yeah, that seems like generous enough. Okay, so we have the explosion happening now. But I still don't like it because the explosion is underneath the ship first. So it kind of would be nice to make the ship go away. But also something that I think is important whenever we have collisions. And let us let us do the debug. Let's remove the debug. Let's remove the debug. Right, so when I get hit by something, I would like to make a, like stop the game for a second, like show me exactly why I got hit, you know? Uh, that's a common technique that you have in a lot of games called hit stop. And I think we actually did it in a basic shmup tutorial. Basically, whenever you get hit, you want to freeze the game for a couple of seconds to, to emphasize being hit, to, like the entire world stops to show you, ah, you've been hit by a smooth criminal. <laughs> 
So yeah, so we want to maybe stop the game for a second. And I want to experiment with this a little bit. I'm not sure if this will work out. I'm just gonna, just gonna try out some things. Right, so let us create maybe a variable for this. So the, the way we have invul, let's, let's call it freeze. And what I'm thinking is the update function here, right? In the, in the update function, in, actually in the UPD update function maybe. Maybe even in the UPD update function, like the, this is gonna be like a global effect, right? Here, we have a slow-mo here, but we could also do something like if freeze then, if freeze is greater than zero then, freeze minus equal one. Else, update, right? So if freeze is set to some value, we're just gonna stop the updating. And now, uh, and now, I'm gonna set the freeze to 600. I'm just gonna I want to freeze for quite a long time, actually. Uh, did I did I did I misspell freeze? Fretze. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Um, because it's a global effect, it kind of really we want to like we want to remove the freeze here when we start a new game, but we also want to set it up before we actually call uh, any update. working um let's let's make a shorter freeze so i want to see it recover from the freeze it works okay yeah and it gets resumed yeah that makes sense totally makes sense okay there's a bunch of things that i want to now change so first of all it's kind of bad that the explosion happens before the freeze i want to first freeze and then show the explosion, right? And also, um, I want the invulnerability also to kick in after afterwards. So this is gonna be a bit of a hack. Let's, let me try out some things, let me try out some things. So if we're gonna die, then we're definitely gonna freeze. And then we're gonna have a second function called respawn or, or die, let's call it die too. And this will happen after we get unfrozen. And then I want to see the explosion. And then I want to see the vulnerability. So for now, this is the only thing that, that will trigger the freeze. So, so here an update function, uh, if freeze equals zero, then uh, die too. <laughs> Later on, we're gonna do a better solution for this. But for now, let, let's just do that like this. There's some problem with the particles. We have created particles without age. Let's not explode. Okay, that works. So somehow the explosion doesn't work when it's when it's here. That's funny. Yeah, we're creating a bunch of particles without without age. But then that should be fixed here if the age is not set. Oh, I know, I know what the problem I think. Right, so. Hey, Christian from the future here. So Christian from the past was so wrapped up in his bug, he actually didn't explain what the problem was. So the problem was that we are creating a bunch of particles with the explosion and the particles don't have an age. And uh, an update function, you know, we always look at the particles that don't have an age and we reset the age to zero uh, when we do that. But uh, there's also the, like this part here, this is the draw function. And that was kind of like animating the color of certain particles. Um, and uh, that was also already checking for the age of the particle, um, but some particles didn't have the age property set at all. So the solution was to kind of like make sure that uh, when before we're comparing the age of the particle to a number, that we make sure that the particle has an age value at all. And if it doesn't have an age value, then we're gonna skip that particle as well. Yeah, like this. Okay, see, this, this is better now. Okay, while I'm in this frozen mode, I want the, the ship to be completely white. 
I know I'm, I'm piling on. I'm sorry. I'm piling on, but it's, I think it's important. So, uh, because I want to feel as, as if I was hit. So for, for be, getting hit, I want just the, the, the ship to just light up, you know, like it's completely white. Uh, so let's do it like this. So uh, let's do camera and then we're going to go if freeze then. And again, we might, we might change that somehow, but for now, the only hit stop that we're going to have is where the player actually gets hit. So for now, we're going to assume that the freeze is always for a player getting hit. Um, so if freeze, then pal um, split 2D. Um, yeah, we, we do have a white flash, right? We saved the white flash. Do we have a white flash? Yeah, we have to have white flash, W flash. So that's good that we saved it. So that's just white flash. And then reset the pal afterwards. Okay. <laughs> if freeze is greater than zero. Greater than zero. Yeah, see, this, this looks a lot better. Um, uh, now the, the, the freeze is a little bit extreme, so let's, let's, uh, let's see how low we can get the freeze. Yeah, see, this, this, looks, this looks good. Now we maybe add some sound effect to that. That would be good. Uh, we, by the way, we don't have any music or anything. We have to think about this later on. Um, right. Let's do like a ping, you know, like, like, like something that feels like, like we got maybe like dinged by some, uh, it's going to be a bit, a bit of a fast sound effect. Something like this, maybe an, an arpeggio effect to this six. That's not fast enough, right? Maybe a different, um, different. Uh, I feel like this is the best. Maybe that sounds more, too much like a pickup. Let's try something like this. Um, maybe a little bit too too loud. Okay. This is a t temporary sound effect. Okay, I like it. And I want to do as another thing here. I'm gonna call it invis um, thirty. So the idea is that when we get hit, uh, I want the explosion to feel like the actual ship explodes. Because right now, when we get hit, the explosion happens, but our ship is immediately drawn on top of that explosion. So for a couple of frames, I actually don't want to show the player. Um, so we're gonna not only have freeze, uh, not only have invulnerability, but also invis. Um, so for a couple of frames, I don't just don't want to draw the ship. So if if invis is equals zero and let's try that. Hmm, I don't think this actually works. Let's go like this. Oh man, I, this is a complicated in, um, end statement. You know what? We can always get an if statement. We can always get a second if statement. So in this, if in this is uh, smaller or equal zero, then right? We're just going to turn it into two if statements, and then later on, I'm going to think about how to construct an if statement because it's like you have to combine and and or, and I'm, I just always never really know what comes first. So let's just do it like this. See, now it looked like as if our ship exploded, but now our, the invis is never 
actually getting out. So let's go else. In oh no, this is drawing. This is we don't want to do this. We want to put it in the where do we change the inval? Ah, uh, here. So let's do like an invis thing. You know what? We can do the invis in the in the draw function, right? Can we? Yeah, sure. Um, minus equal one. It's a bit of a hack. Um, we're gonna maybe clean this 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 later up. Um, in Vizu, okay. So now it looks like as our ship really exploded. I want to feel um, getting hit. I don't want to be something that just like, you know, happens automatically. And as Ectain said, whenever, uh, we don't want to reset the position of the ship actually. That's something that's actually apparently not good. So I'm not gonna do it. Um, maybe, maybe. The highest pitch. It's, it's, it's like highest pitch. Yeah, that seems better. So when we get hit, get by, hit by a bullet, we're gonna see the bullet that hit us. That's, that's kind of like the, the overall idea here. That's good, this is good stuff. Cool. Now, to be honest, I'm not over the moon about all this stuff here. This is like these two if statements, although now this if statement is justified if we actually uh, do this. I don't like that we have two functions happening here. So one solution would be maybe just to get this stuff out and put it here directly in here. Um, and also I have to think about the, right now the freeze frame thing is um, dedicated to our player getting sh hit, but maybe later on we're gonna have like a enemy, like a boss fight, you know, when, when a boss fight you hit the enemy, then we're gonna freeze the frame. <sighs> let us let us slate this for an overhaul. Let us let us do like a small things. Uh, freeze die invis overhaul. This is something that we have to look into later on. Right? I'm just gonna write this down that this is something that we might do in the future. And with that, the collision detection stuff is finished and we can move on to the doggy zone. That's right, the doggy zone. Mm -hmm. Right, so in the doggy zone now, the next step that's gonna be, that's coming up is gonna be a bit more difficult. And so yeah, I'm gonna actually, I want you to sit down and think about this. We have, now the ability to spawn enemies, right? We have to spawn a certain enemy at a certain position. What we need to establish next is a system that allows us to create a schedule for enemy spawns, depending on the scroll value. And I want you to come up with the system, like what kind of data structure we need for this. Spoiler alert, there's gonna be another text file that we're gonna have an editor for. So first of all, the data structure for this, how are we gonna schedule those enemy spawns? What kind of data do we need to save in each entry for the data spawn, for the enemy spawn data? Second goal is again, and I want to reiterate this because this is kind of going to be a tough cookie. How are we going to design the editor to spawn, to, to create the schedule for the spawning? This is going to be the core. A lot of people ask me about this. You know, a lot of people were talking about this, but how are we going to, you know, not just like a space invaders, a real shmup, you know? This is it. This is the crux. Think about this, design a UI, come up maybe with, maybe even start writing your own editor, at least design, like sketch out a UI of how you would edit this. This is the doggy zone coming up in the next episode. Right, right, right. And this is also the part where I say a big thank you and a huge shout out to the people from coffee.com slash lazydevs, the place where you can join up and support this show, make this show possible. Thank you for everybody who's chipping in on coffee.com slash lazydevs. And also I wanted to read out a comment. So this one was from Smelly Fish Sticks on episode 26. I love that name still. I've been, I've recently in my findings found and set uh, blah, 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 or even whether mem set unsplit, blah, blah, blah. I've been crunching a lot. So I guess crunching the tokens, right? Uh, 
And then I'm not sure. Uh, I never thought to just set all the palette values at once like this before, but if you want to do whole flashes, I think this is the best way. Well, I guess better than it would be uh, poke and so forth. Um, yeah, so I think what Spanish First Six is suggesting here is doing a different solution for the kind of flashing that we just did, where the entire sprite flashes white. Uh, what we did is we dumped an entire array into the pal function and that changed all the colors into white. But what Smelly Fish Stick suggests here is to write um, the palette values into the actual memory. There is a whole bunch of memories, addresses, a whole bunch of numbers in the, error, uh, in the memory that um, remember the palette colors and you can just write especially if it's just one color you can write that one number into this area of memory with using memset and that will flash uh, a sprite into one color very nice and efficient way of doing this we might actually do, do implement this later on uh, because it might be actually more token efficient than what we did like with this uh, entire array because we have to like unsplit because we have to create the array using split and so forth and and that might be more efficient i'm not might be even like more performant as well but yeah this is a good suggestions i will look into this maybe in the future thank you so much smelly for sticks Yes, yes, yes. So we are there. The collisions are working. There, our ship is exploding. And now it's time to think about how we're gonna spawn enemies in a way that is you know, like a proper shmup is doing. Coming up on the next episode. See you next time around, guys. Bye bye.